Liverpool versus Chelsea. Liverpool minus 170. Chelsea plus 390. Chelsea plus one at minus 115. Chelsea to get something out of the game is going to be at least uh, plus 125, plus 130. Liverpool free hit is minus 105. The draw at plus 350. I don't think I see four goals here, Brad. And it's the number is at 3.25 with the under being at minus 118. Everything tells me Liverpool, but there's no Salah. And I'm just wondering if this is maybe a normal one of them games where the two of the top six play. It's nil-nil at half time. Yeah, um, first and foremost, massive, massive game for Liverpool's title hopes, right? Um, for those who don't know, Jurgen Klopp over the weekend announced that he will not be returning to the club next season. Um, he's taking at least a year break from uh, managing professional football. Had they uh, had this been the first match since, I probably would have max bet Liverpool minus one. Um, it would have been the biggest bet of my life because um, Anfield, Anfield was absolutely jumping during their cup match. Um, but I'm still pretty confident in, in Liverpool um, winning this match. So I bet them money line in over one and a half goals. This is another game where the price dropped a little bit. Um, now it's 130, but still um, definitely playable. Uh, so far this season, Liverpool uh, out of 10 have won eight uh, with two draws in that. You, We talk about Mohamed Salah, Mohamed Salah being out, but... Uh, guys like Jota and Nunez uh, are, are are massively in form. Um, what I love about those two, and I said those two specifically, is the the connection of Jota passing the ball to Nunez. It's been absolutely fantastic to watch. Um, and other players have been stepping up, like Joe Gomez. Um, he scored uh, five goals in eight competitions. Um, and then Trent Alexander-Arnold is looking like he's going to be more healthy in this game. I haven't been a fan of anything that I've seen from from Chelsea. I, I wrote um, to one of my uh, Blues supporter friends, in Chelsea's last cup match, if you just look at the scoreline, you would say, oh my God, Chelsea dominated. Um, but I saw something different. I saw players out of position. I saw players not knowing where to go during build-up play. If you play like that and you play out of position, especially in transition against the Liverpool side, you're going to get destroyed. So I had to fade Chelsea because that issue that they're having only gets corrected by repetition. And uh, Pochettino is what I call a tinkerer. Players never get this continuity of the same kind of lineup being formed, uh, being pushed out. And so that's why they're lost. That's why they don't know where they go on the pitch. When I saw at one point they had Mikhail Mudrik playing in support, which was chaotic. And obviously it's going to be chaotic when you normally have a guy playing out on the wing. And then you just totally switch it up. Um, so for me, it's fading uh, Pochettino here and taking Liverpool money line over one and a half goals. Yeah, I mean, half of me thinks that this is going to be... I mean, you could go draw half-time, Liverpool full-time. I want to be pro-Liverpool, but I just think that Chelsea are going to try... Maybe it's a live bet, Marco, here, because Chelsea could be a tough nut to crack. I think Liverpool have got all the weapons to do it. But again, it's another one of them games that we look after the event. And so many times it happens that it's a draw and very, very cagey. Yeah, I think these two teams have drawn the last seven games in terms of the head-to-heads, and well, most of those matches that. have been most of these matches have been nil-nil. But I, I personally don't read anything into that previous head-to-head record because the team that played Liverpool Chelsea um, just three games ago is completely different to the Liverpool Chelsea teams we'll see this midweek. So very little to be gleaned from that. Um, I would be on the same train as Brad coming into this game. I think Liverpool are the bet in some way or form. Uh, I believe they're a long, well, I think it's obvious that they're a lot further down their their progression in terms of Liverpool 2.0 under Klopp compared to what Chelsea are trying to achieve right now. And perhaps the news that Klopp is on, Klopp is on his way is the worst thing to happen for Chelsea, really, because, yeah, that game against Norwich has, has already occurred and it came straight off the, the bat of, those, uh, of that news. But, um, you know, I think a midweek game under the lights at Anfield, following on from that news in a big match against a team who... There is still a bit of a rivalry between Liverpool and Chelsea going back to the Benitez and Mourinho era. So there is a bit of an edge still about this. So, you know, Liverpool fans don't normally need too much to get too excited about. And there's plenty for them to to sort of get into this game for. And the team news is positive. I know there's no Salah and there's no Endo. uh, But Trent and Robertson are back fit and available, which is great news in terms of Liverpool defensively. And we all know about their record at Anfield too. And 
Yeah, I'm just not convinced. People are talking about Chelsea being back because they've won a few games recently. But look at those wins. They blew Borough away. Um, Brad, I'm convinced <laughs> with that. But Borough are missing half, I mean, a, a dozen players at least for that match. Uh, it's almost like people forgot what happened in the first leg as well when Chelsea lost away at the Riverside. The three Premier League wins they've churned out came against Luton, Fulham and Palace. Well, Chelsea should be beating Luton, Fulham and Palace and should be beating all three of them mm. comfortably as well. So, you know, I'm not really kind of... To me, the jury's still definitely out. To me, there's still no obvious game plan, no obvious approach to what they're trying to do. They're still reliant on key individuals. Cole Palmer most emphatically, really. And I know they've had to deal with injury issues, but so have almost every other team in the Premier League. And their away record is is really questionable. Five defeats in 10. Spurs, the only win they've had against a team in 13th and above. And that comes alongside a huge asterisk compared, to, obviously, based on what happened in that match. So, yeah, um, I'm just going to try and enjoy this game. Um, I think it's yeah. about the right lines, really. Um, if I had to be involved, I'd probably follow Brad in with that selection. But, um, yeah, it should be good fun. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly the same. I want to see a really good game, whether it's be nil-nil, one-nil, five-three. I mean, if you said to me, Flash, you've got to, got to have one bet in this game, I'd probably be greedy and go Liverpool minus one at minus 105 because I don't want to get in, in the way of them. And Chelsea have been so flaky, home or away. Uh, I wouldn't put anyone for the draw half-time, Liverpool full-time neither. But let's have a little look at the official pick. There it is, Liverpool and over one and a half at minus 130. Uh, good luck to us as a team. We're gonna, we're gonna, whoa, whoa.